There is nothing to fear but fear itself. Yes, he said that, Franklin D. Roosevelt. 33, I think, between two uh, big wars. Uh, but what does it really, what does it actually mean? Uh, I mean, your question is interesting, but does it really mean there is, there are no other dangers in this world than fear? Well, yes and no, I would say. I mean, I grew up during the Cold War. Geographically, I'm born in the middle, mid 60s, uh, and, and uh, I live in Sweden, geographically close to, to the di dictatorship Soviet Union and all the sociopathic leaders. Uh, I had read a lot about the Second World War in school and, and, uh, and uh, at home as well. I was fascinated and scared at the same time. And to learn about the horrors of war, it scared the hell out of me. It actually did. Um, I, I saw these black and white documentaries of the from the Third Reich, you know, Nazis uh, marching and, and pictures from the concentration camps, and it was really, really horrifying. Uh, I never told anyone. I never went to my parents and said, "This scares me." I mean, they were born in the early '30s, so they they remember the war. But I learned to live with this fear because uh, there were no options. I had to focus on other things: friends, books, school, and stuff. The threat was still out there, obviously, but there was nothing. I, as a little boy, could do about it. And I believe we have to, uh, I believe we have to accept that the world is a dangerous place. We had almost gotten ourselves out of the COVID pandemic when Putin decided to invade Ukraine, to start killing innocent people. This scares us. It should scare us. It scares me too. It, it's, it's horrible. We fear war, death, um, safety of our loved ones, climate change and a million other things. But we also fear illnesses to try new things, disturbing relationships, deal with them, uh, the next job interview, starting a new tricky project or just taking that test. So the point is there will never be a shortage of things to incite fear in you. I mean, back to your original question, how do we get rid of the fear? Uh, you don't. I mean, this is the tough truth. You can never put yourself in a place where fear do not exist, is my point. Fear of war, fear of being hurt, fear of losing your job or your partner. Fear will always be there in one way or another. It's that kind of plan. You can't protect yourself from it. The only thing you can do is to learn how to handle it. And don't obviously don't take too big, uh, big of risks, obviously. And, and, uh, and there's a dog out over there. <laughs> Sorry. But when you feel fear, I mean, just take one step in the worrying direction and see what happens. I mean, if, if we take a look at how they do it in CBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, therapy um, my mother didn't like elevators. She was a bit claustrophobic. And uh, so as, as an example, if you're afraid of elevators, look at the picture of an elevator for a couple of minutes and then look at something else. And then you take someone you trust with you, maybe a friend, and look at a real elevator. You don't go anywhere near it. You just look at it, which is the whole point. Nobody pep talk me or coach you into, hey, you can do it. No, no, no. The next time you take a couple of steps closer, you still don't enter it, but you, you, you maybe take a quick uh, look inside it, you know, see what's happening over there, you know, oh, uh, buttons there and a mirror, hmm, okay. You know, the next time you, maybe you stand in it, with your friend, perhaps, without letting the doors close. Next time you take your friend with you and let the doors close, you get the point. Small controlled steps. And soon you will be able to take a ride on your own and the win for you will obviously be massive. That's how you deal with, with fears that you can control, things that you actually can do something about. And, and, and a war is something else. I understand that. Uh, how, do we, how do you deal with... Uh, how do you deal with fear related to the unprovoked Russian invasion of Ukraine. But the first thing you do, I would say, is to not spend too much time with media consumption. I mean, when it comes to fear, it's very much regulated from your amygdala. Your amygdala in your brain uh, controls your flight, fight, or maybe freeze reactions. It does more than that, but to keep it simple. And, and uh, journalists understand this. They understand fear psychology. And they don't hesitate to use your fear to sell more newspapers and make you watch more TV, another episode. Just look at the headlines. You know, black uh, headlines, bah, war. They win every time you, out of fear, read the next horrifying article. And the next, and the next. So don't fall for that. 
they constantly imply we're all going to die, but we're actually not. That's not the point. You don't read newspapers or, or watch too much TV. They decrease your time on social media too. It won't make the reality of the threat go away. I understand that. But it actually will make you feel better. And that is not nothing. It can clear your mind and, and help you to think more rationally than emotionally, shall we say.